Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at ASRock's B650 and B650E line up here for more affordable AM5 options. Now, with the recent release of the non-X AM5 CPUs, I think that these are good options for building a more budget-oriented DDR5 based platform. So, uh, with that said, let's take a look at uh, a couple of options here that I chose. So, like with my Gigabyte video, I sort of stuck to like what's kind of an entry level, then a mid-range one, and then more like a high-end offering out of the B650 chipset here. So, the first one that I went with is the ASRock B650 PG Lightning. So, at time of filming, this video or this motherboard is right around $200. Um, you can get a cheaper cost on these if you wanted to go with like an M ATX or a small form factor build um, but the thing is I tried to stick to motherboards that still offer a good amount of connectivity for the money without skimping too much on either expansion slots um, or ports or uh, SATA and that sort of thing so with this one, um, it's a pretty decent one overall. You know, like it's uh, it's B650, so it doesn't have the full 24 lanes of Gen 5. For that, you need a B650 E motherboard. Um, but I think that the PG Lightning is a good kind of budget line one. I can totally see this one showing up um, later this year, like around Black Friday. I know it's a long time off, but I think that you know later this year during the holiday season. I can see these being bundled for really cheap with uh, AM5 CPUs at places like Micro Center, maybe Newegg. So uh, let's take a look at the block diagram to kind of take a look at what this motherboard offers here. So the B650 PG Lightning, now it being a B650 chipset means that most of the connectivity is going to come through the CPU lanes in terms of where your high lane count is. So right off the bat, you get the graphics card slot at the top there. That's going to be 16 lanes of Gen 4. You do have the Gen 5 4 lanes that they've wired to an M.2 slot. So that's going to be the primary M.2 slot that can handle a Gen 5 M.2 drive. So those are starting to show up now. Uh, and then you have another M.2 slot that's Gen 4. So that takes care of all of the CPU lanes. Uh, for the chipset, we have, you know, four SATA ports. So that eats up every single one of the PCI 3.0 lanes. So there's four of those in total. They can either be PCI 3 or they can be SATA. And most of the B650 motherboards, if not all of them, are going to opt to use all of the, those lanes for SATA ports. And that leaves us with eight lanes of PCI Gen 4. So what ASRock has done is they've allocated one lane to the 2.5 gigabit LAN, another lane to the Wi-Fi 6E, and then two of the lanes are allocated to a PCIe Gen 4 expansion slot. This could potentially be used for a newer 10 gigabit NIC or network interface card that only uses two lanes of Gen 4 to achieve 10 gigabit because that's really all, all that's needed. Uh, and then you have two more X1 expansion slots. So they've gone with Gen 4 X1 for each of those. So if you count them up, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So six of the PCIe 4.0 lanes are used. Now, if I were going to critique this motherboard I do think that so two of the lanes are not being used I do think that what what ASRock could have done differently is they could have taken this expansion slot and made this an X4 expansion slot use those last two lanes to make it an X4 because that would have made this a really nice motherboard on the cheap for adding in you know like a Thunderbolt add-in card or a 4K60 capture card. Um, but because this is only X2, you can't do that. So that does kind of limit this. I think the reason why they would do that is primarily product segmentation. It is to differentiate this lower-priced board from a higher-priced board. 
that's gonna be it for this one. If we take a look at the next motherboard then, that's gonna be the ASRock B650E Steel Legend. So this one, I think, is a happy medium between, like, it being under $300 and still giving you a lot of connectivity. The other thing that I will add is this motherboard does include a very interesting uh, GPU anti-sag bracket. That's kind of a nice value add on the Steel Legend. I do, I do kind of like the Steel Legend just overall, both the B650E and the X670E. I think that they're a, a happy medium in terms of, like, what they offer. So if we look at the product page here just briefly, you can see it has a good amount of USB, it has a good amount of uh, HDMI and display output on the back using the integrated graphics. So if we look at the block diagram for this guy, this is where things get interesting. So this is B650E, which does mean that because it's B650E, it is going to feature the full 24 lanes of Gen 5 on the CPU. So 16 of those lanes of Gen 5 go to the graphics card slot. Four of them go to a M.2 drive. What ASRock has done for the remaining four lanes, they actually run them at Gen 3 speed instead of Gen 5 speed. They do that for a couple reasons. One, because it cuts cost on the amount of retimers and a signal regeneration that would be needed to keep the signal integrity for PCI Gen 5. So that is one thing. And the other thing, too, is it does uh, without having to worry too much about the layout on the motherboard. All those lanes are accounted for with the PCI, with the chipset then, now we have, you know, Gen 3 and Gen 4. So here is where it is a little bit strange. So what's odd here is ASRock has decided to only feature two SATA ports. Now, two SATA ports is, you know, not a whole lot. Um, I really think that they should have just kept four. Uh, but what they decided to do is use all of the Gen 4 lanes for M.2 drives. So, remember I said there's eight capable off the chipset. So, four go to one of the M.2s and four more go to the other M.2. So, you can do a total of three M.2 drives off of this motherboard. Uh the remaining PCI Gen 3 lanes, one of them goes to the Wi-Fi, and then right here, this is a typo. This is definitely a typo. So here they say Gen 4, but this is really Gen 3. So ASRock needs to correct that. This is definitely Gen 3 because the chipset only features eight lanes of Gen 4, and those are going to go to the storage. Uh, so that's all of your Gen 4 lanes. So that means that you have four lanes of Gen 3. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be it for this motherboard in terms of how they've allocated the lanes. Uh, sort of strange choice on the, uh, the use of only two SATA drives. Um, but I think they did that to try to squeeze in another... Uh, NVMe drive because what I've noticed is that a lot of these B650 motherboards will only feature two M.2 drives so by taking away two SATA ports they're able to allocate another M.2 drive so it's kind of one of those things where it's like ASRock in my mind ASRock is, was sort of thinking that okay the Steel Legends is going to be more on the uh, the cutting edge of technology so it's going to be more M.2 focus and we want Gen 4 storage so they opted for that at the compromise of less SATA. So that's the only drawback of this motherboard. But other than that, everything's used well. Um, and they've kept the price point down by not uh, using Gen 5 on that PCIe expansion slot. But that is nice to have that. That does tell me that it does support Thunderbolt. And if we look here on the motherboard, I can see right down here, you guys can see right here, Number 26, this right here is the Thunderbolt header. So you can add Thunderbolt uh, to the B650E Steel Legend. So that's really nice. So that leaves us with the last motherboard that we're going to look at from ASRock. And this is going to be their flagship. This is going to be the B650E Tai Chi. So just like with the X670E Tai Chi, this one... You know, same kind of color scheme, same design language. Um, lots of USB ports on the back. 
You have the clear CMOS, the BIOS flashback, the 7.1 optical audio. Um, but what you may notice, what's interesting here is the USB-C port on the back is actually a Thunderbolt port. You, have, you can see the Thunderbolt uh, logo there. So that indicates that they're going to be using that Intel JHL 8540 chipset. So let's take a look at the product page. And sure enough, it's got USB 4 Type-C. Uh, there's one port. It says ports, but I think it's just one port. Um, so they are only utilizing one of those, uh, and I don't think they're using DisplayPort input either. So kind of a cost-saving measure there. They're not wiring up everything that Intel Thunderbolt chipset's capable of um, just to kind of save on costs. But uh, let's take a look at it in, in detail here. So it being B650E, uh, the Tai Chi does have the debug, the LED debug I forgot to mention. It is down here at the bottom, so that is nice to have on a flagship B650 board. You get 24 lanes of Gen 5. So we've got the graphics card slot up here. That's a Gen 5 capable slot. You have a Gen 5 X4. I don't know why it says Gen 5 Redriver. Apparently they need a Redriver uh, or they're using one for this, for that first M.2 drive. So that's a Gen 5 drive slot. And then, and then here's where it's interesting. So they have taken the Intel USB 4 controller, they've wired it up to the last gen set of four uh, Gen 5 lanes, and they take one of the display outs, and they put that into the, they've soldered that into a display port input on that uh, controller, so you can get video, you can get integrated video out of your uh, AMD processors integrated graphics off of that Thunderbolt port on the back of the motherboard. So that's that's really nice to have. So you have, not just do you have the HDMI port for video out on your primary display out of integrated graphics, but you have another display out via that Thunderbolt port. So that is pretty cool how they've done that. And then on the chipset, you know, four lanes of Gen 4 for another M.2 drive. So that's your, your second M.2 drive. And here what they've done is really interesting. So this is kind of what makes this motherboard more high-end than those other ones. So rather than just wiring up a third M.2 drive, so what they've done is they've wired up to a, a, a Gen 4 PCIe switch, and that can either give you the third M.2 drive, or it can give you a PCIe 4.0 X4 expansion slot. So I like that they give you choice you know, the higher end chipset, so like an X670 chipset, the difference with that chipset and this more budget friendly B650 chipset is the X670 has more lanes, so you don't need to run the switch. You basically get all the options. Whereas with B650, there is some kind of compromise. So if you do want, uh, it's one of those where it's like pick and choose. You either get another M VME drive or you get an open. Um, X4 expansion slot. So it's one or the other, um, but it is nice that they actually give you the choice because a lower end B650 motherboard, like we looked at earlier, doesn't even give you the choice. ASRock will just choose one of them and run with it, and that's what you get. Um, whereas with this motherboard with a Tai Chi, you get to choose if you want an expansion slot for something like a 4K60 capture card. So it gives you a choice. So if you want like a 4K capture card, um, you can totally do that. Um, but if you're never going to do that, if you're never going to use a capture card or a 10 gigabit LAN or whatever, you know, then you have your third M.2 drive. So overall, it's nice to give you the choice. And then what they've done is another interesting thing. So they have taken the 3.0 lanes. So typically one PCI 3 lane can go to Wi-Fi and the other to the LAN. So here's the one gigabit LAN and then one for the Wi-Fi and that leaves two more lanes. So Unlike the Steel Legend, where they wired, you know, one Gen 3 lane to a SATA port and another to the other SATA port, here they're actually using Asmedia 1061 uh, controller chips here. They're using these, two of them, to essentially split the PCI 3 lane into two SATA ports. So they're getting you two for one lane. They're able to do two for one lane. The only limitation of doing this is that you cannot raid these SATA ports. Um, but 
honestly, guys, on a consumer desktop, when we're talking SATA, you're either going to run a couple of these with, you know, SATA flash SSD drives, or you're probably going to run a couple of them with spindle drives, whether we're talking like eight terabyte drives or six terabyte drives or whatever for high amounts of legacy storage. It is nice that you can get four SATA drives off of a B650 motherboard um, because that is something where it's like if you have four of these, you typically don't have, you know, this. So it's cool that they give you a lot of options. So the nice thing about the Tai Chi on B650E is that, yes, there are some drawbacks like no RAID on the SATA and you have to pick and choose whether or not you want that X4 slot or you want that third NVMe drive. The nice thing is that it gives you choice. So you're not you're not forced into one. You get to choose which one you want to implement based off of your use case. So that's really nice to see. So overall, I'm actually quite impressed with the Tai Chi motherboard. It includes the Intel controller for Thunderbolt. So you have the Thunderbolt built in. You don't have to add in a Thunderbolt card. Um, so it's kind of a nice way of doing it. Um, you know, maybe maybe because of that Gen 4 switch, that's why they ran the controller straight up to the the uh, thing. Well, you know, they could have just done it that way. So that's going to be it for the Tai Chi and the B650 lineup from ASRock. Hope you guys like this format of videos. Um, and if you have any questions on any of these motherboards that I've talked about, or even if it is a different motherboard that I didn't cover, as long as it's B650 or B650E, um, ASRock, uh, or even any of the other ones, Leave a comment below and I'll try to respond when I have a chance. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And once again, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.